What I'm going to do is demonstrate for you the how to draw a human head from the front and then how to draw a human head from the side and I might review how to draw a human head from any angle as well. So it's all based on the Loomis method. So the idea is you start with a circle and the idea is that the side planes of the cranium, okay, we can see them from the front. There, the side, the ellipses are sort of, you know, the head's tilted in, so we can see the side planes from the front, and they're also tilted down slightly. So when we do this one from the front, we draw a circle, and then we imagine this kind of side plane, right? but it's an ellipse. So what we're actually doing is kind of breaking the rule that I gave you last week about drawing ellipses. We're drawing ellipses with pointy ends. They're not technically ellipses, they're called vesica pisces. Imagine a slight tilt in and then draw these side planes as ellipses with pointy ends, just like that. And then what you want to do is just erase the outside edge of the circle. Okay, you might use it later as a guide for your ear, but you don't need it now. So that's roughly speaking the idea. And these, you want these to be still two thirds the height. So I should have checked that. It's pretty close. It's pretty close. So then, um, Let's make him looking down a little bit. So halfway through, we find that center line and then we just swoop that across a little bit. So this is the brow line. Now, the halfway up the height of that ellipse is our, it's a bit high, isn't it? So the halfway up the height of that ellipse or the side plane is the distance between the nose and the brow and the brow and the hairline but we're going to use it at, for the section that's closest to us so because he's tilting down it'll be brow to hairline right so that's that distance there and now I'm going to make this a little bit smaller okay and then I'm going to make that a little bit smaller again because of foreshortening all right so i've made i've used that as the halfway point right that half side plane is that measurement because this is closest to us and then i've just shaved off a tiny squidgen for each of those Okay, and then we've got the center line. Now, as he mentioned in that video, the center line of the face is, is in the middle only when, you can, when you're looking straight on at the person. The jaw line starts at the bottom where the side plane joins the circle, but just inside a little bit, and it's angled in a touch. Okay, it comes down. <clears throat> we can establish the width of the chin at the bottom, let's say about there, and then we're going to just sort of join that up here. Now I feel like mine overall is is thinner than normal. I think what I've done is I've I've angled this in a little bit more than I would normally do. But this is perhaps an example of where, you know, some people are literally sort of, you know, they're not as round in their structure as others. So let's consider this one of those people. Maybe he's a Scandinavian or something. Anyway, there's his nose line. Okay, we've still got this swooping curve that starts there and goes up to the center of the side plane. All right, and that allows us to sort of pop in this line here, which sort of shows us the side of the brow area and it's kind of a good way 
to simplify that whole area just to put a, a swooping shape across the bottom. So it's sort of like a one, two, three, four, five, six sided thing. And this is the bottom of the nose. Now, because he's looking forward, the nose would be slightly different from this angle. But for the moment, I'm going to just... Um, do you know what I think I did wrong? I made that a little bit long there. And that's pretty good. A little bit long at the bottom. Maybe that's better. I think it's not so much the length that, that is the issue here, but it's the width. I've just made mine a little bit too. That's a bit better. Okay, and now the neckline, just outside the, the jaw and angled in a little bit. Okay, and then depending on the point of view, it's about here. And maybe we would have that. All right, and then the ear tucks in here, starts below that half line and goes up to about the top of it. And as Proko mentioned in that video, the outside edge of the ear normally comes out to about where the circle was. So my circle was about out here. Okay, so I could sort of do my ear something like that. All right, and that's roughly it. Um, what else? Um, yeah, I mean, you don't have to add facial features to each of these. I, I'm really happy if most of them, four of them, four or five of them are just sort of plain like this. But that's roughly speaking the guide. All right, so roughly speaking, again, I'm focusing on men here, but that's um, just because I'm a man. Okay, let's go again. This time we'll, we'll have him a little bit more straight on. I did a little bit of foreshortening there, but let's do him straight on this time. So we'll start with a circle. And it looks roughly circular. And we'll find a, a sort of a two-thirds the height. So it's about from about here to about here. It's not exactly circular, but it's reasonably close. Okay, and then um, now we still, even though he's looking straight at us, we can still tilt this in slightly at the bottom, just a bit. I just won't do it as much as I did before. All right, so this is the sort of the start of the center, the side planes. But we're imagining this sliced off section. So we're slicing off a little bit of that circle. All 
right? And, and it's kind of good to rub the circle away at that point so we don't get our proportions wrong. All right, something like that. Now the center line is in the center. I'm turning it because it's easier for me to draw it straight from the side like that. And here we're going to make him look straight on. So the center point of the side plane is going to be straight. You know, maybe a slight curve. All right, and now because he's looking straight, we've actually got these two points. That's your brow line and that's your bottom of your nose line because they're already built into the drawing. All right, and then we can take the same measurement, just check it. Oops, that's two. Oh, I know why, because I, I curved this up slightly. Remember how I sort of curved it up a little bit? So let me just take that measurement there. All right, and just mark that on there. And then go down the same distance. Check that. Boom, 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 boom. So that's now him looking straight out at us, he or she. So there's the nose line, there's the chin. Now the jaw, we're going to attach the jaw now. It's a triangular prism. It starts just inside here angled in slightly. Oh, you know what I forgot to do before? Oh no, I did it. Um, and then determine the width of your chin. And then once that comes down a little bit, you just want to then join it up. Okay, that's starting about here. You'll see, you know, there's an actress I can think of, Sandra Bullock. She's got a really square jaw. You know, sometimes when you look at someone from the front, it's almost like it comes straight across, you know, depending on exactly the tilt of their head and exactly the shape of their, their bone structure. But you could probably say that that's pretty reasonable. All right, so we've got the center line, we've got the jaw, the chin. Now we've got a a point swooping back up to the center point of the side plane. Swooping back up to the center point of the side plane. And there's our nose line. And roughly speaking, that's our brow. And then our nose, or well, the brow plane so it comes down there. And then the bony protrusion of the nose starts there and comes out. Uh, it's normally about the width of an eye. And there's normally five, five eyes width across. So you've sort of got, you know, let's try that. One, two, three, four, five. See that? So that the width of the eyeball or the corner to corner of the eyelid is about one fifth of the width of the cranium normally and then that point can give you the edge of your nostrils and the mouth pops out just a little bit further from that and the eye the halfway down gives you the bottom of the lower lip or one third of the way down gives you the sort of the opening you know, and it again depends on the person. I'll go to the bottom of the lower lip. Sorry, the, um, yeah, the bottom of the lower lip. You're like <laughs> I did something wrong there. Oh, it's not halfway down. Halfway down is halfway through the lower lip. I'm so used to doing the opening line. I'm going to do this way. One third of the way down 
is the, you know, just above the opening of the mouth. That's a bit better. All right, that's better. <clears throat> okay, so then the eyeballs start here. Something like that. Um, nostrils begin there. You know, depending on the... He looks fairly squat, doesn't he? I feel like I've made him too wide. I think my circle was too, too wide earlier. But that's all right. It's just to get you most of the way, you know? It's not... It's not perfect. Okay, neck angled in a little bit. Coming down. This guy's kind of a stocky footballer type, I think. All right. Give him a fancy haircut. Shaved side plane. There you go, he's a he's a K-pop star from the West. <laughs> okay, so that's those two. That's the frontal view. Now let's move to, I can't see my time. I think I've got more time. Let's now move to the side or the profile view. It's following the same measurements and ideas, but we're just using the side plane, okay? Side view this time. Just open that up now. So in order to do that, we start with the circle. Just check that it's roughly circular. That's pretty good. And now, this time, we've still got the side plane, and it's still two-thirds of the height, but it's a circle because we're looking from the side. So we're simplifying everything down, and we're saying, well, that's a circle, and then the side plane is another circle that sits right in the middle of that. So that's the idea. So you could maybe find your middle, sort of estimate the height to get the two thirds. It's about there, right? So my other circle should stop about there. Something like that. Okay, so there you go. Now, this is the same questions or decisions you were making before have to be made now. Is he looking straight ahead or she? Or is he going to look up or is he going to look down? Let's make him look up. So if he's looking up, the center line through the side plane is about like that, which means that the, um, you know, its opposite is through here. It's not very precise, but it'll do. So he's looking up in this direction. Everything else is the same. The frontal line for the frontal plane or the, the jaw sort of maybe does that. And then the, the, um, the back of the jaw starts um, here. Now I've been in my earlier video, I had them, sorry, in my earlier talk to you, I had it starting in front, but I noticed in Proko's, he reckons it should start just behind the center line. So I'll, I'll do that. 
Behind the center line, you bring the jaw down a little bit, and then you it swings across, right? But we've got to use the measurements to determine that. So here's our half the side plane measurement right there. If that's our brow line, then these measurements are all correct. In other words, a straight line out from here gives us that one. Straight line out from there gives us the brow line. Just check it. And then the same distance down. Gives us that one. So our chin's about here. Okay, from the side you might see a little bit go back and before it starts to angle up. And then it's going to angle up, you know, depending on where it is. Now if you look at that and you feel like it's looking a bit too tight, which I feel like mine is, I'm just going to make mine stick out a little bit more. You know, it depends on the person. Everyone's slightly different. Okay, so that's coming down. Check my heights again. Half the side plane. A bit lower there. That's my nose. And then half that again. Chin, so yeah, a bit lower. Just gives me a little bit more of a a chin you could say or a jaw all right so he's looking up or she or he again the cranium still tucks in around here just like before and you know the vertebra pops up inside there somewhere so the neck would start maybe about here so if he's looking forward allowing for a bit of fold in the skin you know the neck's probably going to shoot off about there and then probably join up around here so now I feel like I've made his jaw a little bit too large but anyway we'll keep going and of course the skin will either come down like that or down like that depending on how fit and healthy and muscular the person is let's say that so in here same idea that the ear starts here it's attached here, tends to come back, reach the top of that quadrant, and then sort of curve around. And then again, depending on the person. I really have to study my ear, ears. Okay, so the brow line. Now there's all these different angles, okay? When, when, once you've established the basic proportions, then you want to still feel his jaw is too big. Yeah, it's too big. Let's bring that up a little bit. And his neck's a bit too wide. <clears throat> all right so there he is um so nose line right so bottom of the nose now you'll find there's a little most people's noses tilts up slightly at the front tilt up slightly at the front um, then there's all these different angles um, and it depends on the person but you've got an angle for the nose maybe about there you've got an angle for the top of the brow um, you know, sometimes this part of the head is a bit flatter out the back. Sometimes the forehead's a bit more pronounced. Um, then we've got the this sort of muzzle shape, right? It's normally sort of a little bit curvy, like a little bit of a barrel. So you can sort of imagine that as you indicate your lips. Um, now I feel like the chin's a bit small <laughs> so just keep adjusting you're the boss it's your drawing you know 
but you know we might arrive at something like that let's just try to boom 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 okay got that coming out to there that's the brow line there so our little ball eyeball is going to be in about there and then the eyelid it's going to kind of do that depending on what the person's doing or feeling his eyeball that eyeball is a bit small I'll just make it cheat it a bit a bit larger <clears throat> all right and again you know noses i mean how many different types of noses are there quite a few i would say <clears throat> and i'm used to looking at western noses not eastern noses and mm -hmm. our noses tend to be bigger than asian noses that one's a little bit too big, I think. Let's give him a Roman, a Roman nose. There we go. <laughs> I, I like exaggerating noses. I think they're so they're so varied. It's fun to play with. I feel like his eyes are too high, but anyway, you get the idea. All right, so what do we got? We'll give him um, a buzz cut, maybe. Like a t-shirt on him. His ear's a little bit large. And there he is. Oh, we forgot to do our um, curved line. See how useful that line is? Because it starts to show you sort of where the cheek is. Uh, and this... Can all sort of contribute so as I say one one out of the five or six drawings should have some facial features but most of them can be just sort of just the guidelines just so you're practicing the idea I'm not really happy with this one but you know I'm really happy with what I draw to be honest it's okay give him a real broken nose look what about a scar? It's more fun drawing characters, isn't it, than perfect people? Anyway, that's roughly the technique in action. All right, um, and now I'll just check the time. Because I can't see it from here. Oh, good, we've got 20 minutes. So I'll just review the... Uh, first one we did which was drawing a face from any angle using this technique same sort of set of ideas really starting with the circle check that it's circular pretty good find uh, create a, an ellipse that's about two-thirds of the height now 
how you do that, you might find the center, which makes it easier to find the sort of, you know, it makes it easier to break that up into thirds a little bit. And then it makes, similarly down here, that's a bit easier. So, you know, my ellipse would be from about there to about there. And the width of the ellipse will determine the sort of, um, you know, how far they're turning. So I'll make him turning a fair bit this time. Something like that. All right, so now you decide, is he tilting up or down or straight? Um, I'll just make him slightly up. So the side, and again, I'm looking for the center first. It's about there. And then he's going up a little bit. All right, and then because this is the side plane, right, it's going up the side plane and then it's just curving slightly as it comes to the front plane. And then you take the bottom and match that angle and that curve. So you're kind of copying that line almost. Okay. And then roughly speaking, you're going to have your brow line up here somewhere. Now to find the um, chin, you can basically take that measurement there or this measurement here. Check it's the same. It's pretty close. And then just go down that same distance. Because he's not tilting too high, we can keep these about the same. And that puts the brow line up about here. So roughly speaking, that'll be my jaw there. And then we want to just add the bony, uh, the, um, the prism for the jaw, okay? So remember it starts um, at the back of this center line, about here, comes down, and then it attaches over here, and then allowing for a bit of a width of the chin, maybe about here, it just swoops up. And then there's a swooping curve from the, the edge of the chin up to the middle part of the side plane. And then in the middle of those two, you've got your center line. Not in the middle, but the visual center, you know, it's not the actual middle, you know, it's a little bit further to the left, about there. All right, so, yeah, that looks about right. I'll just check my sizes. It's a little bit, it's a little bit low here. So I'm going to lift this up. I'll split the difference, go halfway. All right, so that's better. So there's my nose, my brow, my chin, my hairline if I need it. Um, what else? The neck, let's pop the neck in. So the circle here, it's quite close to the ellipse, but you can sort of imagine it tucking in here maybe. And then the neck would begin, you know, somewhere around here. Maybe like that. I like to kind of visualize the neck as being a cylinder and sort of as if it's attached up here. You know, it's, it's like the ball is sitting on a cylinder. And I'm sort of looking through everything at the moment. I'm imagining everything's made of glass so I can, you know, by imagining that ellipse, I can see where the neck starts. And we can't see this, but it starts there. I hope that makes sense to you. How those lines can go. And we're sort of left with that. So from here we can build, you know, the rest. Maybe the skin comes down here. Maybe that's his Adam's apple. Um, the way the neck attaches to the chest or the rib cage is it's Again, it's a cylinder, so it's an ellipse, but it's tilted down a little bit at the front, so you can sort of imagine it tilting down there. And then the ribs begin there, and, 
and then we've got trapezius muscles etc popping out there so and then the shoulders might be there all right something like that so you can get a feeling now right that he's looking sorry that was a bit close you can get a feeling he's looking across and up so now we maybe could add some facial features um, if you want so we've got that shape there remember goes across and then sort of down a little bit like that and then from this side in fact you get a you know maybe like that shape that's just a simple way to sort of summarize all of this stuff right the whole the two big openings for the eyes right you've got this kind of shape and then a kind of a swooping shape right sort of what I'm indicating here except that they're a little bit lower because of the brow bone here all right and then um, the nose attaches about here this plate comes down to about there and then the um, the, the bony protrusion for the nose pops out a bit like that and then the the membranes are attached to it something like that maybe I feel like his jaw is too high but we'll see how it goes so about one third the bottom there you can allow for the muzzle to be a little bit of a protrusion And, you know, depending on his country of origin, you know, some people have very, very large lips and very large mouths and, you know, how it goes. You know how it goes. Okay, so the ear goes up to about the top of the quadrant. So it starts just a bit below it. It's attached. Then, um, you know, something like that. Yeah, it's pretty good. So it's starting to come together. Now, depending on how much detail you want to add, if you wanted to add facial features, go a little bit further. I think I might just bring his jawline in there. Um, there's a lot of rhythms in the in the human body so there's a sort of a elliptical plane almost for the forehead okay and then that, that sort of reaches over towards here almost touching or touching this side plane there's this kind of muzzle shape there's a kind of a elliptical form to the chin depending on you know as we've been talking about sometimes next you can start to see these muscles um, that wrap around anyway okay so that's roughly that my nose is not quite right I think I've started to warm up a little bit, which is good. Now, eyeballs. I often get these wrong, but um, 
yeah, we've sort of got one fifth of the width of the cranium. Remember that. So if we take a measurement from there, one, two, three, sorry, one, two, three, four. That's too big. So it's maybe about there. One, two, three, four. Yeah. So remember, a ball is a ball from any angle. So the 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 size of a ball is going to be the same from any angle. So so the size of his eyeball from the front, right, would be one fifth of the dimension. So I'm going to make this one here one fifth approximately. So I'm going to start at about here. All right, so that's the edge of my eyeball. So in other words, his, this eyeball is about this big. All right, now this one's going to be smaller because it's further away. So maybe about there. Okay, but we don't see the whole eyeball, thank God. Um, but again, if he's looking away, maybe there's a sort of an ellipse here for his iris and whatnot. And then his eyelid will wrap around that. All right, so that may be is sort of where the eyes might sit. And then we've got to remember, you've got the lid, and then it sort of goes in under that brow muscle there. It's kind of tucked back in. You know, something like that. <clears throat> so this is it. This is the Proco.com Loomis method with a bit of shine thrown in for drawing the human head from any angle. And then in one of these drawings from today, I want you to add some facial features. Just have some fun. You can watch Proco's video back to help you, or you can do your own thing, or you can try to copy what I've done or something. But remember, human faces are very different. You know, they change a lot. Even in the same family group, the, the positions of the features are slightly different. So this technique is just to help you get, get a little bit, get started, really. Does anyone have any questions? It's giving big sideburns this time. It can be a rocker with an earring. You can add some little eyelashes. So look, it's good, isn't it? I mean, you can get a fair way without any reference images. So this has all been done without reference images. So 
it's it's good you know if I was doing um, you know if I was doing a portrait of someone I'd have a photo of them or I'd be looking at them in front of me but when you're just playing around and you're trying to maybe you're composing an, an illustration for someone or something you know so there's different ways to to get us where we want to go So I mean, I was just sort of slightly um, adjusting the shape, and again, craniums, skulls are different shapes. Especially if you look at bald men, there's a, there's often really a variety of um, of shapes. He's looking a little bit effeminate now, but that's all right. He's a beautiful masculine man. All right, guys. Well, I think that's about it for the day. Um, so finish off your five drawings, pop them up to the discussion board. And um, on Friday, we're going to look at the proportions of the human body. And um, that's how we're going to sort of um, slowly merge into the human figure drawing Folio, which we've started now, but we're going to really kick off properly next week. That'll do. Oh, I can't stop. <laughs>